I love this story. I love this story where Jesus tells a huge crowd that he has just fed with two fish and five loaves of bread, that he will not be giving them another meal, that he is more than just a prophet like Moses. Jesus tells this crowd he is the bread of life. I love this story because it is a story of invitation and identity. The people in the crowd following Jesus around seem to have forgotten who they are. They remember manna in the wilderness. They remember how their ancestors were taken care of while traveling to the promised land. They remember Moses. But they have forgotten it was God and not Moses who provided that manna. God fulfilled their needs in the wilderness. So Jesus invites the crowd to remember who they are. Jesus invites the crowd to stop searching for another Moses, for a new prophet, and for food that will only satisfy their physical hunger. Jesus invites the crowd to an intimate relationship with him, invites them to partake in the bread of life, and tells them he is the bread of life. Jesus has come down from heaven like the manna that came down in the wilderness and will not leave us empty. The manna in the wilderness satisfied the physical hunger of the Israelites. Every day, God reminded them they were not forgotten. Every day, God sent the manna for the Israelites to eat. Now, the manna in the wilderness was not meant to be hoarded. The manna would be given every single day, and the Israelites only needed to take what they needed to satisfy their hunger for one day. God would not forget them. God would provide. But the Israelites, in typical fashion, tried to hold on to the manna, take more than they needed for one day, and it got really gross, really fast. <laughs> the bread of life that comes to us from heaven is not meant to be hoarded, kept for our own personal joy and fulfillment. Like the manna that comes every day, the bread of life is given all the time and is to be shared among all people. We are called to help one another meet Jesus and share in the bread of life. God's people, every one of us on this earth, is created in the image of God. We are given to one another to care for each other and all of the creation. And this is how we share the bread of life. We find the bread of life in each other. We find the bread of life in every part of creation God has given us. And these are the places we are invited to meet God and share the bread of life with each other. Each one of us knows those places where we most clearly meet Jesus. Sometimes we can see where other people meet Jesus, and that is a gift they share with us, leading us to meet Jesus where we otherwise might miss the bread of life. For too long, I was missing the bread of life that God offers to us in what has been created and given to us to use and to care for. So often in our Bible stories and the songs we sing here together, we sing about God as rock, storm, wind, lion, mother hen, birds, and yet many of us seek the bread of life only in other people. Now, before I came to Elkhart to go to seminary, I was living in Columbus, Ohio, and I taught preschool. <clears throat> 24 little angels at three and four years old. I was not exactly running around the huge city of Columbus, looking for God in nature, squeezed between concrete and buildings, streets, buses, cars. I knew I was being filled with the bread of life through my children. And that seemed good enough until they began to show me that all God creates is what fills us and satisfies our needs through our use, through our love, and our care for what we are surrounded by. Now, we had a beautiful playground, a rarity in Columbus. We had space for running and riding bikes, lots of grass, and a huge tree that provided lots of shade in summer. 
Now, I would catch frogs that somehow wandered onto the concrete, and I held them for the children to see. And they delighted in these small creatures and followed them as far as they could once I put them back in the grass. I saw an amphibian lost on the playground in danger of being run over. My children saw a creature to be marveled at and loved. They were filled with the bread of life by a frog. When it finally snowed in February a few years ago, when winter was really warm, we went outside. And my children immediately threw themselves into the snow to make snow angels. I had seen a wet mess to cause an inconvenience for my drive home. <laughs> the children in my class showed me the wonder of a precipitation sent by God to blanket the earth and be enjoyed, even today, and even tasted, filled with the bread of life in the snow. In the spring one year, the preschool classes were given caterpillars so that we could all watch them grow, see the chrysalis they form, and then release the butterflies. I had no desire to have insects, especially insects that would fly in my classroom. But my children would sit at the table and surround this jar containing the caterpillars for long periods of time, just watching them crawl around. They talked about how awesome the caterpillars were. They absolutely could not wait to see the butterflies. And children talked about what they would look like if they were butterflies and discussed where the butterflies would go once they flew away. I saw icky, creepy insects, and my children showed me the life filled with possibilities found in one of God's most delicate creatures, filled with the bread of life by a caterpillar. My children met God in the creepy crawlies, and the frogs that somehow got lost in the city and found their way to our playground. They were constantly full of the bread of life and sharing it with everyone. The questions from my preschool class, what do the frogs eat, where do butterflies live, why is it snowing today, were questions I answered as factually as I could. I was their teacher. Frogs eat insects, butterflies live in bushes, it is snowing because the clouds got too heavy. I gave factual answers, but it was those questions that led me to meet Jesus, where my children were meeting him. The children met Jesus in parts of creation I had ignored for too long. I had forgotten and very much been annoyed by. So when the children in my class led me to meet Jesus where they found him, and to be filled with the bread of life, they showed me how intertwined all of our lives are, how we depend on one another, and yes, even frogs, to be filled with the bread of life. The caterpillars needed plants for food, the frogs needed the insects and the plants, the plants needed the rain and even snow and cold. And we needed them all and each other so that we might feast on the bread of life. My young students led me to be filled with the bread of life in nature. And so I, in turn, led them to God where I was fed with the bread of life in each of them. The bread of life is to be shared. So while the children rejoiced in nature, I celebrated each of their individual gifts. I introduced the children to each other beyond name and face. They learned to take care of one another and delight in the achievements and ideas of every child in the classroom. They fill each other and me with the bread of life. The children led me to God outside, in animals, sky, in the soft grass of spring, and even the cold of winter. They brought me to the bread of life by reminding me that God can fill us through the mountain, storm, wind, lion, mother hen, birds. The bread of life is not to be gathered up and kept hidden, so I took them to God where I was filled with the bread of life, in each of them, just as they led me to new places. God helps us lead each other to be filled with the bread of life every day, just like the Israelites were given manna to eat in the wilderness every day. Without each other, we hunger for God. And in the absence of the bread of life, we seek only the things that will not fill us completely. We work for food, for clothing, for shelter, and these are necessary parts of our reality. But God invites us to take the bread of life 
to be filled and never hunger. Jesus had to remind the crowd of people following him around who they were before he told them he was more than a prophet, that he was the bread of life, that Jesus could offer them more than fish and bread for one day's lunch. Jesus had to remind the crowd who they were. They were God's people. They were the people brought out of Egypt, people who wandered in the wilderness, searching for the promised land flowing with milk and honey. They were people God remembered. They were the people who received manna in the desert from God. They were the people who were called to be a blessing to every being around them, just as God had blessed them and given them the promised land and never forgotten them. Remember who you are, and be filled with the bread of life. We are children of God. We are children of God who receive the bread of life when we look beyond the things that fill us for just a short time, and open our hearts to find the living God in every part of creation that surrounds us. We are children of the resurrection, who know we are loved and remembered by God, even when life is at its worst and most difficult, because God will send someone to bring us the bread of life. We are children of Easter Sunday, who receive the bread of life and live on its sustaining love when we get stuck in the darkest days of life. We are children of God who know the story of the Israelites wandering in the wilderness and God's gift of manna in the desert. And we know Jesus is the bread of life that sustains our inmost being. We are children of God who have received the bread from heaven, who continually receive the bread from heaven and share it with the world. We are a part of God's creation, created in the image of God, male and female, to care for all creation, from the plants and the creepy crawlies, to the deer, the cats, the dogs, the birds, and each other. We receive the bread of life in all God created. We share the bread of life through all God created. We share the bread of life by leading each other to God in God's great creation. We are called to share the bread of life with the people we meet. We lead one another to meet Jesus in the sharing of food, the planting of gardens, the singing of songs, knitting of caps and mittens, the wonder of a frog on concrete, the beauty of flowers in spring, the deer wandering through snow, the flow of the Elkhart River, a gentle hug, a kind word, or a hand on the shoulder. God uses us to fill each other with the bread of life. I learned to meet Jesus in the frogs and the butterflies, to be filled with the bread of life by some of God's smallest and most delicate creatures. But on Sunday mornings here, I am filled with the bread of life when I hear your voices out here singing songs of our faith together, Yes, I can hear you from the organ bench, and it feeds my inmost being. This coming Thursday, many of us will gather together to give thanks for friends, for family, for the food that nourishes our bodies. We will be filled with the food that nourishes us physically, all while we give thanks to the God who gives us and who is the bread of life that nourishes our whole being. Many of us will join with people who invited us to eat with them, or with people we invited to eat with us. As we gather during this holiday week, let us give thanks for God's invitation. Because God has extended an invitation that is far better than an invitation to Thanksgiving dinner. God invites us to remember we are children of God. God invites us to receive the bread of life and share the bread of life with each other. It's an open invitation. The bread of life is for me and for you and the person down the street and people we don't know. This week as we give thanks, let us give thanks for the bread of life wherever we may find it. And let us share God's invitation to receive the bread of life every day. The bread of life really is better than Thanksgiving turkey. The bread of life is offered every day to everyone in every place we meet God, and every place we meet God. God remembers all the children. God gives us the bread of life, so take a little and pass it on.